Hi everyone, welcome to a video that helps explain how to keep your lab notebook. So you have this PowerPoint on Canvas, but I just wanted to show it again here uh, while I show you a model so that you know what you're looking for. So like I said, these are pretty much what you're going to need um, every time you do your lab notebook. So the first day was a little bit crazy and maybe you didn't have time to do that. So just make sure you go back and do it before you turn in your lab notebook. So always, always, you guys are going to need the date uh, and time of the experiment. Time is going to be a little questionable, right? Because sometimes, you know, obviously we just meet at whatever time your class is designated as. You, you can just put that. Um, if for some reason there are other time periods you need to keep track of during the experiment, and then you have to add that to your lab notebook. This one right here is going to vary depending on the lab so if we're actually going to be creating uh, experiments right where we're investigating something then definitely you need those um, however like i said in class uh, the first couple of weeks is us just learning how to um, learn skills and how to do things. And so we're not really going to do that till later. So like I said, please take a look at your weekly to-do list every week. I will tell you when we're going to start doing research question and all of that stuff I just circled. Um, research protocol just means the steps right so if you take a look at your lab module sometimes your steps are going to be three steps sometimes your steps are going to be the whole thing um, i don't want you to really copy it word for word necessarily the purpose of your lab notebook is to condense it right so if it says i don't know a detailed thing about pouring this into that and amount and whatever you know i would be okay if you just say I don't know, this is just an example, pour 50 ml of dye in test tube, something like that. You don't need to write all the little details down, but I will leave that up to you. If you think you need the whole thing, then go ahead and write it out. Um, but me personally, as long as you, I don't know, you have some indication that you read the lab, I'm okay with that. Some people, what they do is they write a shorthand version in their lab notebook, and then they still print out the protocol to bring with them the class, just in case but as you guys notice i always do project the uh powerpoint or sorry i always project the module on the board so if you are missing something you know I, we can always clarify that but you do need that and then these ones scientific observations and data they kind of go together um and this is going to vary depending on what lab we're doing and so pretty much this is one of the important things that you guys are gonna need on there so I'm going to put a star there because those are the things that we're really grading you on, right? Did you get your data? Did you analyze your data? Did you do the calculation? Stuff like that. And then it's not written on here, but sometimes there are, uh, I'll put it down here as a new bullet point. There are something called end of lab questions, right? And so at the end of every lab, uh, it's going to ask you a couple questions, either regarding your data or regarding your uh, experience in the lab. Maybe, you know, if we're actually doing an experiment, what did you find? Stuff like that. So please always look. They're always at the end of the lab modules. Oops, sorry. At the end of the lab modules. And they're not for all labs. So like, for example, you know, the one that we did today, there's not one, I believe, on this one, right? But there will be some that will show up. Now, you, you might be wondering, okay, well, how do I know, right? So uh, at the, I don't know, towards the time where we're going to turn in our notebook, I'm going to show the rubric so that you can check and make sure everything is there. So everything that I'm grading will be on the rubric. And so it'll be very clear what it is that you're needing, right? The notes that I put right here, this is just if you want to take extra notes while we're taking, uh, while we're doing lecture, right? So you can add your notes on there. Um, 
and then it says right here it says you will scan and submit your lab notebook pages three times throughout the semester so again for me personally if you're able to i would say keep up with it um, because you don't want to start trying to figure out where your data is or where your questions went um, you know a day or two before the uh, notebook submissions i highly recommend you want to keep at it while we are doing it every week so that you don't get stressed out when it's time to turn it in right so that's the overview this is again the uh, format that we're gonna do when we start doing experiments so for the most part uh, the next few weeks when we're still learning skills all you need again date and time uh, you probably need protocol right protocol just means it's just another word for methods you need any data tables if we're going to collect data, any graphs if it wants to do that, and then discussion or conclusion or end of lab questions. Sorry, handwriting is horrible today. <laughs> end of lab, oh, not modules, end of lab questions. Right? So again, please, please, please take a look at your weekly to-do list. I will tell you when you're supposed to do the research question and the hypothesis stuff. Okay. Uh, so let me see here. Uh, this is things that, again, you know, if you're keeping at it, then you want to make sure you have these done before you come to class, right? Again, we don't need this yet. So that'll be next time. Um, like I said, I talked about uh, writing out your um, steps already. So, you know, leave that up to you. You can go back and listen to that if you zoned out for a little bit. Um, and then data tables, right? Like I said, I mentioned this in class. You want to make sure your data tables are already ready to go to fill in because it takes a couple minutes sometimes to make them. Um, and I don't know how picky you are. You might need a ruler and make sure it's nice and pretty. So you want to make sure you do that ahead of time. Um, but me personally, I don't really care if your lines are straight or not. It's a science notebook. Science is meant to be messy. So as long as you can read it and I can find it and I can identify what it is, then you're totally fine. Right. So just keep that in mind. And then we talked about this briefly. I don't need a specific notebook. You just use whatever notebook you have. Don't have a preference. So let me show you just an example of what a lab notebook would be and what I'm looking for when you turn it in, right? So like I said, I'm going to do the example for the uh, lab we just did, the micropipetting one. So give me a second. I'm just pulling up the modules here. So first things first, obviously you need a title, right? So your title will be and if you're not sure where I'm getting all of this information from, just look at your modules. That's what I'm looking at. So the title of the module was Lab Safety and Micro Pipetting, right? Every page, every page, every page that you're going to uh, use for this lab, whether that's one page, two page, three pages, 10 pages, you want to make sure the title is in every single one of them, right? On the top, nice and big. Um, if I were you, I would highlight it, maybe use a different color, whatever you want, right? So I'm going to use orange just for fun. And then the date date and time so right now as i'm doing this it's august 24th 2023 and let's say my lab session was at 2 30 today so i just do that right so now we're good and then um we're going to pretend because <laughs> i'm not going to write it out for you but we're going to pretend that we wrote out our steps right so what i need you to do so let's say i put steps here Right. What I need you to do, and I will emphasize this a lot of times, every time you label a section, I need you to either, um, again, use a different color or highlight it. Right. I need it to be obnoxiously, uh, <laughs> obnoxiously visible because, again, when I'm checking this, right, I shouldn't have to dig around your notebook to find something. Again, in science notebooks 
are traditionally messy, that's okay. If things are out of order, I don't really mind. It's just I need to be able to find it because if I can't find it, then you might lose points. Or if I'm taking too long flipping through your notebook, or I, I guess flipping through your document, right? Because it's going to be a PDF. If I'm taking a long scrolling back and forth looking for stuff, then I'm going to get frustrated. Then, you know, again, you might lose points or I'm just in a bad mood. <laughs> so, Make sure you highlight it, um, use a different color, however you want to do it. You just want to make sure that my eye will be able to see it. So then let's pretend I have the steps right here. And then same thing, right? When you do the data table, let me look at what the data table is called. When you do the data table, same thing. I need you to label it for me, right? This one doesn't have a name. It's okay. But your section, anyway, your section title is data, right? So once you write your data down, again, highlight it, right? And then draw your data table. I'm just going to make a very, very ugly one right here. So let's pretend that's your data table, right? So then that's all good. If there's any calculations, do your calculations. Same thing. I'm going to get a fresh page here. So same thing, you know, I will label it calculations. I don't care if it's part of your data. It's okay. You need to label it, especially if I'm grading it. If you see it on the rubric and it, and it tells you that I'm going to check it, I need you to highlight it or use a different color, right? So I'm going to do my calculations. One plus one equals two, right? And again, I use the same page. So I'm going to do lab safety and micro pipetting. Right. And then another thing that students often forget, end of lab questions. Right. Now, there's not some um, there's not one here, but there will be one later. So just keep that in mind. Right. End of lab questions, different color, highlight, whatever you want. Sometimes you're going to need to make a graph on Excel. Right. So let's say this is you in class. You did all your questions, blah, 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 blah. But then you realize, oh, my gosh, I forgot my data table. Right. Or sorry, not my data table. I forgot my mm, my graph and you already did all of this. Right. I don't need you to tear it up and do it again. Just make sure on your uh, notebook, just say graph. Right. Just title it graph and then highlight it, like I said, and then just glue it on there, glue the graph on there. Right. Let's say that's a graph and then that's it. So I just need it to be very obvious and I need it to be um, somewhat readable. <laughs> right. I don't really need to understand your handwriting too much, but at the very least, I need to be able to read your end of lab questions because that's how I assess your um, how much you've learned and how close you are to the learning goals and stuff like that. Right. So. If you have any questions about the lab format, lab notebook format, let me know. But like I said, once the notebook check comes along, I'm going to post the rubric and just go with it, right? Highlighting these sections will ensure that you don't forget anything. And you really should have full points whenever we have notebook checks because you're doing it in class. It's just a matter of organizing it and making sure that it's readable, right? You don't want to lose points and at this this is the only time I'll probably call it dumb points, but you don't want to lose dumb points for not turning in something you already did in class. Right. So as always, please make sure to send me any questions via email if you have any, and I'll see you guys in class.